Good morning, everybody. Hey, we're here on Mauer Mound. It's time for worship. I'm glad y'all can make it. I was actually up at 5 o'clock this morning thinking I was going to get up. I was like, man, it's 5 o'clock. I'm not getting up. And I got to sleep a little longer. But we are here now. And uh, glad y'all made it, like I said. Obviously, it's not a race weekend because it's 9 o'clock. So we are here at home. And let's play a song. Here we go. Since this was kind of a short song, we're going to play one more today. You get to hear a second one. John News, your freedom. Stand for what is right.
That should have woke you up. I live for Christ. That's what we should do. And I hope that's what we do do. Do do. Yeah. But sometimes we mess up. And that's why we have Christ. Because of Him we're forgiven for all our mistakes. Well, let me find our service sermon here for today. As I said on my invitation, we're going to talk about heaven a little bit today. But before we do, let's start with prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we just thank you for another beautiful morning to get together and hear from you. Father, we just thank you that you ministered to us. And Lord, I just thank you so much for all the people that make you number one on Sunday morning. You know, you want to be number one, and we want you to be number one, but we get so sidetracked at times that, you know, it, it, it doesn't happen. But we thank you for all your forgiveness, and we thank you that you continue to draw us to where we take time out for you. So as we get ready to read from your word this morning, Lord, I just ask that you'd have the Holy Spirit minister through me to where everyone can just get what they need to out of this message and where it can be something to help them in the days and years to come. We just thank you ever so much, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So, you know, what is heaven? I mean, we... We hear about heaven, and when we look outside, we talk about heaven. But, you know, I want to use some scriptures and talk about heaven a little bit. And, you know, there is different heavens, obviously. You got the heaven we see, uh, that'd be the one we look out, and you look up in the sky, there's heaven. And then, you got the heaven that's... I think it's like an alternate universe almost. You might, you know, you might say the parallel of that's where the angels and the demons are all around us. And I mean, that is the second heaven. And then you've got the third heaven, and that's the one where uh, Jesus went after he came off the cross. He went to be in heaven and to, to prepare a place for us. He went to heaven. So that is a heaven that none of us have, have gotten to experience. None of us that are here today. But when do we go there? Well, we get to go there when we die. So let's start with Genesis 1.1. It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So it is a, you know heaven was created by God for us, and He wants us there. He does not want us to go to the other place that we've talked about. <laughs> uh, but God has no intention. He does not want us to go to hell. He, he's made every opportunity for us to be able to come to heaven with him. And, you know, uh, I want to read a scripture out of Luke 23. It's verses 42 and 43. And I'm sure you've all heard it. You know, that's when Jesus is on the cross dying and the two thieves are on the cross with him. And, you know, one's on one side and one's on the other side. And uh, the one thief says is, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Wow. So he knew you know, when he died, he was immediately going to be in paradise. And the same thing with us. You know, should we die today and you know, we have Jesus as our Savior, we're going to be with Him in paradise. But now, you know, there's a little bit of controversy. Some people say paradise is part of heaven or uh, you know, is paradise and heaven the same thing? I believe paradise is part of heaven. I do believe that. And you know, like I said, when we die and we know Jesus... It says, absent from the body, present with the Lord, is what the, what the uh, Bible says. And we will be there. And what's Jesus doing there right now? Well, let's see what the Bible says. Well, in John 14, 2, it says, 
My father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I, would I have told... Uh, hang on. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? Hey, Jesus is there preparing a place for us. Now, you know, I was joking a little bit with Cece earlier, and I was like, hey, should we happen to get a bungalow there in the New Jerusalem, if we got a motocross track right on the outside of the wall going around there where we can go play, I don't know. I don't know if that'll be anything very important to us at that time. Or, you know, we talk about, talk about riding the Harleys in heaven. I don't know if that'll be very important to us. But one thing we do know, it's going to be an awesome place. And we will be there. So, when will Jesus come? Now, when, when's He going to come for us? Well, nobody knows for sure. But the sign of the times, you know, the Bible says the sign of the times will tell us and you know when we look around us it sure looks like he's you know he should be coming any day and we better make sure we're ready and even if he doesn't come every day we may go see him just any day you know you just never know that so we got to make sure we're ready so but let's just read and see what the bible says about it and second peter 3 10 through verses 13 it says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. The earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to, be, you ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with His promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. And we're going to be in that new heaven and that new earth. And the righteousness will dwell there. There won't be no more wrong. There will be no more sickness, no more sorrows. It's going to be awesome. And, you know, heaven is real and the earth, God's going to redo the earth and it will be part of it. So I don't, I mean, I don't totally get it. Uh, I don't, I don't believe like the Jehovah's Witness do where, you know, 144,000 get to go to heaven and the rest of us get to stay here on earth. I don't believe that. Uh, you know, but heaven and earth will be part of it. And you know, it even talks about the the New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. I mean, and we're gonna read a little bit about that here in a minute, as to the New Jerusalem, how awesome it really is gonna be. And it's in Revelation that's where he talks about that. But uh, let's read. Uh, let's see, Revelation twenty-one one. It says, "Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth." For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them, and they will be His, key, his people and God Himself will be, will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things passed away. That's what we're waiting for. Don't you love it? I know I love it. And uh, God wants our best. And He wants us to be there with Him. And, you know, this earth, you know, and, and I, it, it kind of makes me think sometimes, you know, when we're, when we're talking about uh, global warming and, you know, all this stuff, you know, that uh, we got to you know, fix everything here. We, you know, we, 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 we got to make sure this earth will last forever. This earth is not going to last forever. It, it, 
the Bible already says that. We need to do we need to be good stewards of it. But we need to know that this earth is not going to remain the way it is. And gosh, I mean the destruction of it sounds terrible when you know what we were reading there earlier. You know, the heavens will disappear with the roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. The earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Uh, since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. You know, we read that just a little bit ago. So, uh, I'm thinking before global warming can do too much damage, God's coming back anyway. But that's just my opinion. I don't know that. I mean... That's just an opinion. That's not straight out of the Bible. So, but when the New Jerusalem comes, you know, that's when God's going to be living with us. And all those questions you had, you know, we're going to have eternity to talk to them about all, you know. And, you know, a lot of the questions, you know, some, you, we joke around sometimes, you know, hey, you know, when I see God, I'm going to ask Him this. When I see Jesus, I'm going to ask Him this. And, you know, some of that stuff may not even be all that important then. But if you think about it, we want to have eternity to talk about it. And that, that's just totally awesome. But I want to read uh, another scripture out of Revelation. There's a lot of Revelation in here today. It says, Then the angel showed me the river, and this is John talking. It says, Then the river angel showed me the river of water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Down the middle of the great street of the city on each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month and the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city. And his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. There will be no need for light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. This is when our life is going to be great. I don't know if you want to look at this as boot camp, you know, and... You know, when we leave here, we get to live the real thing. Uh, I really can't picture that we're going to go there and forget what we learned here and what this is all about. I really don't believe that. I think we're going to remember each other and everything. And we're going to live there together. And I, it's going to be an awesome, great place. And... You know, is heaven a physical place? Yes, it is. I got one more scripture, and it's a pretty long one that I got to read, but I really think we all need to know this. And this is talking about the city of Jerusalem. That, you know, the new, the new Jerusalem that comes out of heaven. And it is a real place. You know, when you hear people talking about... You know, floating on a cloud and playing a harp. You know, that's going to be what we're going to do in eternity. Yeah, you think about that, that'd be kind of boring. Now, I know we will spend eternity worshiping God. Yes. But it's not going to be boring. I mean, there's a place in the Bible where it talks about us judging angels. So, I mean, we're going to have stuff like that to do. Uh, there's going to be a lot of things that we have to do. You know, you know uh, Jesus talks about taking communion. Uh, you know, because he says he's not going to do that again till his coming, till he comes back. So, you know, he's physically drinking. Uh, there's, I can't remember where the scripture is, but it talks, I think it was in Isaiah where it talks about, you know, plant, that, you know, people will still be planting and stuff. So I don't know. We're, we're going to find out. But, let me just give you a hint, uh, and I will, uh, or, or not a hint, let's read the scripture about what the new city of Jerusalem is going to be like, just to give you an idea of how great heaven is going to be. 
So it's Revelation 21.10 is where it starts. And it ends in verse 27. So 21.10 through 27. So we got a little bit of reading. But I think it bears reading. And I'm sure that a lot of you have not read the scripture. So you really should read it now with me or you know, let me read it to you. And But Revelation 21.10 is where it starts. And it says, And he carried me away in the Spirit to a mountain great and high. This is still John speaking. And showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of every piece of precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal, it had great high wall with twelve gates, and with twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb or was in memory of, I would say. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates and its walls. The city was, the city was laid out like a square. As long as it was wide, he measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia. Now, 12,000 stadia don't mean nothing to us. So... I went ahead and I looked it up in the dictionary to see how you convert this to miles. The city of Jerusalem will be 1,380 miles one way and 1,380 miles the other way. And it says as wide as it is long and it's also going to be 1,380 miles high. Now, I'm trying to picture this. Now, can you imagine a city 1,380 miles both directions, and then also in height. You know how many people you could fit in that, baby? Man, that'd be huge. You know, and, I mean, that is a huge city. And then it says, the angel measured the wall using human measurement, and it was 144 cubits. So the wall going around the city you know, which had the 12 gates in it, like we talked earlier. And each gate had an angel at it. Uh, but that, it was 144 cubits. And if you convert that to feet, that is 216 feet thick. Now, that is one monster of a wall. But I mean, you think about it. If this city is... 1,380 miles high. I don't know if they're talking about skyscrapers or if they're talking about you know, huge, like different layers. I don't know. The Bible's not very, not clear. doesn't say that. But it just says that's how high it is. But I would imagine you need a couple hundred foot wide wall to get it up a long ways like that. So, and then check this out, what the wall's made out of. The wall was made out of jasper. And the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jacinth, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, and the twelfth amethyst. Man, that is, I mean, it's just amazing. Twelve gates were twelve pearls, each made of one single pearl. Now, we look at a pearl that's you know, this big round, you know, half inch diameter, that'd be a huge pearl for us. But a pearl the size of a gate? Wow. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. I mean, it's just 
I don't know that you can really imagine what that looks like. I mean, it, but it, it'd be totally awesome. I'm sure somebody, if you if you went online, hey, you can Google everything nowadays, right? And you type that into Google, I bet somebody's built a model of this of some kind that you could probably look at to, to stir your imagination to try to envision what this thing's going to look like. But it'll be phenomenal. So, but here's something to, rem to notice. It, verse 22, it said, I did not see a temple in the city. And then it explains why. Because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. There, we don't need a temple. We don't need another temple. We just need the Lord God and the Lamb, which the Lamb's Jesus. Now, uh, the city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives the light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. And then here, check this out. You know, we got this huge wall with 12 gates, but if you read this next Verse verse twenty five. It's this is just a symbolic deal. On the day, on no day will its gates ever be shut, for for there will be no night there. So those gates will never close. It'll be open for us. We will be there, and you'll be able to go in and out. And that's what I was talking about. You know, I'm assuming. You know that. Be the, the whole universe. I bet it's just all going to be included in heaven. I, I that's my opinion, but I really believe that, and that's why the earth is going to get restored, and oh, it's just going to be awesome. And are we going to have to get in our car and drive three thousand miles to get from one end to the other? I'm a thinking not. I'm a guessing we you know we might be able just to blink right there or whatever. I don't know. You know now we're kind of talking, but. So, but 26 and 27, the glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it. Or will anyone who does not does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, that's Eden restored. So, where are you? I mean, do you want to live in a city like that? I mean, do we do we want to live with God the rest of our lives? You know, one thing about God, He is not going to force you into His kingdom. You're like, what? Yeah, if you choose to deny Him, if you sit there and go, I want no parts of Him, he will honor that. But if you say, Lord God, I know I need Jesus in my life. I need Jesus as my Savior because I can't live up to your standards. But I know with Jesus, through the blood of Jesus, which Jesus' blood was spilled as a sacrifice you know, for us, and through the blood of Jesus, I know I can get into heaven. That's why I get to go there. Not because of anything I did. I mean, that's what, that's what, we, that's what we need. That's what we want. And when, if you do that, you will be there. So I don't know how people can say that, you know, I don't see how a good God could make people go to hell. That good, awesome God provided a way for everybody to be in heaven. But it takes us being willing to surrender. And you know, most of us, we don't like to surrender to things. We like to be in charge. I'm an in-charge kind of guy. I like to be in charge of my work. I like to be in charge of my shop, my home. I mean, but I need to have Jesus be in charge. And if I have Jesus in charge, that awesome city I'm going to see someday. And I'm going to live there with all my friends, all my brothers and sisters. 
my physical brothers and sisters and all my brothers and sisters from another mama, as you might say. We're all going to be there. We're going to be brothers and sisters in Christ. And, hey, you know, last night we were at a party at a friend's house and we played uh, horseshoe golf. Hey, we may be playing horseshoe golf again in heaven someday. You just never know. So, remember this. Remember how awesome heaven is. And if you got friends that don't know Jesus, hey, we want them there with us. We don't want to go there by ourselves. That's why we do this. The reason I'm talking to everybody this morning is because I don't want people to miss the opportunity to go to heaven. And the people that totally don't want no part of it, it's not my job to make you want to go to heaven. The Holy Spirit will call you. But I just hope you listen and say yes. And with that, I would like to close. Dear God and Father, we thank you so much for this little picture, this glimpse that you gave us of what heaven's going to be like. I mean, if the new city of Jerusalem Jerusalem is going to be like that, we know the rest of it is going to be just as awesome. So Father, we just thank you for giving us a glimpse into the future. And you know, Lord, we want to be in eternity with you. And you know, just seeing that glimpse, yeah, hey, it may draw some people. I don't know. It says your word never returns void. So I just hope that you use this message today to draw people to you, that we can be in heaven together someday. Father, we just thank you for that. We praise and worship you. And anybody that's out there today, you know, I I heard a, something about the the... Uh, the virus getting worse again or a different strand or something. Lord, we want to put a stop to that right from the start. We want to pray for everybody. And Lord, we need to, we, we need the United States fixed. You know, I had a lady ask that we pray for this country. And you know, we do that anyway. But for the Lord God, we need the, Lord, the United States back to where it used to be. And Father God, I just ask that you would... Minister to each one of our politicians up there in Washington. To influence them. I mean, just knock on their heart. And just give them the thoughts that they need to where they can think your way instead of their way. Father, we praise and worship you and we just love you. In Jesus' name, amen. So thank you all for coming. I'm glad you guys was here. Uh, we'll see you again next Sunday. I hope you join us again. And one question, uh, or one thing, uh, Facebook, since I've put this on my Resurrection Ministries page, uh, I cannot invite people like I used to, and support, they say that they send invites out. Let me know to make sure you're still getting an invite to the service like you're supposed to. I mean, even, but even if you don't, we are there every weekend, so don't, don't, don't miss us. With that... Have a good Sunday, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.